So starting from Midgen History Notes website, go to Photos and under Aerial, click on Midgen and there's a link to Marco Refrigerators and we have seven aerial photographs from 1948. So we'll look at the first one, number EAW017017, nice repeating number there for some reason. And I must say the quality looks good. Hover over it. Yes, the Marco Refrigeration Works, Mitchum 1948. The reason I'm including it in my series of videos is that this is stated to be in Mitchum but also the company is stated to be in Streatham Vale. So that's one of those sort of interesting edges of Mitchum that currently using postcodes like SW16 people will refer to as being not Mitchum. I'll, I'll cover that in another video, don't worry about that now. This road then is, well, let's check it by looking at a map. And I'm going to use a geo-reference map because the individual sheets that I do prefer looking at split the factory into two. So we want Ordnance Survey 1 to 1250, 1944, 1972. And we're going to have to zoom in a bit. There's the railway line. The yeah, bearings. Level crossing Eastfields Road and Tamworth Lane. This map is dated 1952. That's handy because our aerial photograph is 1948, so it's going to be close enough. At this time, this is all Mizzen Nurseries. That's where they built the Eastfield School, currently the East St. Mark's Academy. Road Road. Oh, way too far. Oh, I, I can see the, the cemetery at Stratham. So this is Ryan Road as it bends around there. And Mepham Road. The meter works. I'll come back to that in another video because actually I think it's quite interesting. So on Ryan Road between Windermere Avenue and Hassocks Road Bayard Croft and those are the roads that surround the Manor Works brackets refrigerators. Let's go back to the little photo. So, as I said, this is Ryan Road. That then is Hassocks Road. And over there would be Bayard Croft. Yes, you can see from Hassocks Road the road curves round and there are some houses that, that we can see here zoom in a bit so this this as i say is hassocks road that's by Artcroft, which comes in and then loops round and this these set of buildings is the manor works refrigerators Right, that sets us into the right area. And we have very conveniently 
Marco written on the side of this building and Marco Refrigerators Limited written on this side of the building. And one thing that is actually quite interesting already is the people you can see in the photo. There's a fellow here striding along. There's a woman with a pram. Someone on a bicycle. Another person on a bicycle. 1948. Not many people had cars. Houses right next to the factory. I wonder what it was like living next to a factory with machinery going all the time. Can't see any cars parked anywhere. So what do we know about Marco Refrigerators? Well, on the British Newspaper Archive, I've come across an advertisement from 1930 in the Norwood News. In the 16th of May 1930 edition of the Norwood News, this advertisement says, King Soul is here. His warm, welcome person is with us for a few precious months. Yet, as we said before, a nice bright fellow, King Sol, but no respecter of perishables. Inconsiderate with butter, for instance, ruthless with milk, unsympathetic with a joint of meat. So food everywhere has been going into refrigerator quarters, into Marco refrigerators, where it will keep its cool freshness indefinitely. Refrigeration is such a clean, simple, satisfying job with a Marco Electric. Without water, ice or fuss, it gets down to work and doesn't even ask you to switch on or off. All Marco Electrics are self-starting and self-stopping. In the home or in business, the Marco Electric is indispensable. There are 36 models to meet every conceivable refrigeration requirement. Running costs are surprisingly low. If you are unable to inspect them yourself, a most interesting booklet telling you all about Marco refrigerators will be gladly sent on request. It also says demonstrations daily at Harrods, Barker's and Army and Navy stores. Keep good food good by keeping it in a Marco refrigerator. Further down, we see some prices for individual models. The model DM5, £48. The model SCR, designed for commercial use, are made from specially selected well seasoned timber. Timber? With a one full length door. Complete specification on request. Price from £108. The model 35, in brackets, 35 cubic feet. This fine Marco model, also designed for commercial use, has 26 square feet shelf space and 24 feet wall rails. It typifies the outstanding value offered by the Marco range. Price £110. Now, we come to the logo of the company, British Marco Automatic Electric Refrigerators, and note that it says... Marco Refrigerators, brackets 1929, brackets limited. Manor Works, Stratton Val, SW. Phone, Pollard, 1141. So using a year of 1929 in the name suggests that that was when it came into business. Let's have a look at some of the other aerial photographs. This is EAW017018. Much wider area at the back there. If you're interested in Stressham and beyond, this is the one for you. There's that one with the pram again. And then from this angle, we can see that she's probably waiting for a bus. There's a bus stop sign there. Is that shown on the map? Mm. 
No. Oh, look, vehicle, truck. Allotment to the back? Oh, part of the nursery. Can we see that on the map? The Sterling Nurseries. Is that a scarecrow or someone working in the field? Um, it's pretty woman over there. As I say, these are houses in Bycrofts. Bycrofts, Crofts, sorry. Still don't know why it's called that. Sports ground over there. Let's see if that's on the map. Should be. Playing field. School playing field. Okay. Netball court. You see this dotted line? Well, dots and dashes. That's the actual borough line. So this is my justification for using, for covering a factory that claims to be in Stretton Vale, but is actually, or was at the time, in Mitcham. See what other angles we get. Right, this is a change of angle. So before we were looking from this direction. So what did I say? Hassocks, Windermere. So we'll look at that map again. Perhaps zoom out a little bit. So Windermere is quite a long road. Which is this. And this factory then is the meter factory. Meter works well. Smith's meters to be exact, but I think it was other things in the past. But that's for another video. So over there. So this is 1948, are, are these, yes, these are temporary housing nissen huts for people who had been bombed out of their houses during the war. Uh, th these ones are curved and these ones are flat roofed. So this is Polly's Hill, isn't it? Let's have a look back over here. I need to move out. Get more bearings again. So there's a expanse of green. Here's the factory. Windermere. So, effectively, from the corner of Hassocks and Rowan, yes, let's take a bearing that way. No, bear with me. There's Hassocks. There's Rowan, there's the, the, manu, the manor works, the refrigerator works, and we're looking all the way across. No. 
wide way. So we're looking from the refrigerator works, Rowan Road, Essex Road, we're looking almost diagonally down to Wide Way. And those are the Nissan Huts temporary accommodations in Wide Way, which were there until 1960. Glad farewell to Nissan Huts from the Mission News of Mercury, 29th of April 1960. And there's a picture there of the curved huts. So we can see them over there. Hmm. Interesting. Okay, let's look at another photo. This photo is now looking from behind the factory. Rome Road here, Hassocks Road here, and that curvy bit of Bayard Croft. 6th of July 1948. Let's go down to Hassocks Way. Hassocks Road. Let's go down to Hassocks Road and see what's there. Possibly someone going down the shops. Fairly new trees been planted. See Marco on the side of the building. This is Ryan Road. So now we're seeing opposite. The previous photographs we didn't see what was on the other side. Ryan Road. Looks like a wood yard there. It's showing up on the map. Oh, we've gone off course. No, it's not showing on the map. but the open space is, which is this bit here. Interesting looking building, 87 to 93. TCB and LB, telephone call box and letter box. Won't be able to see them on this side. Looks like um, news agents there, perhaps. Perhaps there. Which would be a handy place to have a telephone call box. And uh, this photo seems to be damaged in some way. And that's the cemetery. Let's have a look at another photo. Oh, this is quite damaged. But since we were remarking earlier on, about buses, there is actually a bus at that bus stop. Result. I've been waiting for a bus and it's come along. I wonder if that was 118. Delivery van, people walking about. 
Uh, the one with the pram, her bus hasn't come yet. Something written on that fence. Can't quite read it. Hmm. There's 21. Let's go for all. Penultimate one. Uh. Quite damaged film. It's a shame. Okay, let's look at the last one. Whoa, very damaged film. Oh dear. Never mind. You fellows having a chat. Woman with pram waiting for a bus. And someone delivering something. A hand pulled cart. Baker, perhaps? So, what happened to the company? In the Norwood news of January 29, 1960. It was a very optimistic statement about the state of the company. Big year for the fridge firm. The firm of Marco Refrigerators Limited, Rowan Road, Long Thornton, are full of new ideas aimed at keeping the company in a good position in a highly competitive industry, says the chairman, Mr Edwin G. Batt. In his annual statement, he refers to the past year as a phase unprecedented in extent. Never before has the company in such a short space of time completed preparations for launching so many new models. These included frozen food display cabinets and an entirely new range of ice cream conservators. Considerable cost has been involved in their development. Mr Bat adds, I would like to extend to all employees, whatever their duties or degrees of responsibility during this momentous time, our warmest appreciation of their efforts. In the face of great problems, trials and temporary setbacks, they have come through smiling. However, in the January 13th, 1961 edition of the Mitchum News and Mercury, on the front page, the headline was, Marcos, hit by credit squeeze, makes loss of £51,000 and workers fear for their jobs. But wholesale sackings not expected. The 350 employees of Marco Refrigerators Limited in Rowan Road, Mitcham, were shocked to hear at the weekend that their company made a net loss of £51,795 last year. This is in marked contrast to the previous year when a profit of £32,639 was made. Many of the workers have been asking among themselves, will this mean some of us will lose our jobs? Excuse the silly voice. The management refused to comment this week, but it seems reasonably certain that wholesale sack-ins will not take place. Shortly before Christmas, 29 were laid off because of the dropping orders, but none has been dismissed since. Trade improving again. It is understood that trade is once again improving, and according to sales representatives, will continue to go up. The firm, which makes refrigerators, mainly for industrial and commercial use, a large part of their output goes overseas, gives two reasons for the 1960 loss. Firstly, the government's credit squeeze, including the higher purchase restrictions. Secondly, the need to sell many of their goods at little or no profit to meet, quote, cut-throat competition, end quote, in spite of increased material and labour costs. Every step has been taken. As official statement by Marcos adds, every possible step has been put into operation by the directors to rectify the position. No one at the company would enlarge on this statement. We can say nothing at this stage, a spokesman said. Marco refrigerators are not alone in their poor financial result. Many other refrigerator firms have been similarly hit. The company filed for liquidation in 1966, as documented here in the 
London Gazette. The official public record. The London Gazette, 25th November 1966. Issue 44182, page 12893. Marco Refrigerators Limited. General meeting of the members. Monday, the 26th day of December 1966, at 12 o'clock noon precisely, for the purpose of having an account lay before them and to receive the liquidator's report showing how the winding up of the company has been conducted and the property the company disposed of. 21st day of November 1966, Eric Milner, liquidator.